Welcome back to CBS News 24-7 continuing storm coverage. Look at these radar images right here. They are streaming to our monitors and they're showing Hurricane Milton exiting the state of Florida, going out into the Atlantic after slamming that state throughout the night. Milton brought the promised storm surge and that means this, severe flooding. This is video just to our monitor showing how people in Clearwater had to be pulled out by boat at an apartment complex this morning. Usually underneath that water, People walk on sidewalks, down staircases. Now they're stepping down those staircases into a rescue boat. Catastrophic winds also hit and hit hard. Look at this. This is the home of MLB's Tampa Bay Rays. No roof this morning and wet. The stadium helped to shelter thousands of first responders as they got ready to respond, but they had to move. Luckily, those National Guard members who planned to sleep there, by the way, by thousands on cots that we had shown you that were set up, they had to pick up those cots and get out as the roof peeled off. And then look at this, a mobile home community flooded. And that is where we find CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bohorkas. You can see the flooding here in this mobile home community just outside the city limits of Orlando in Orange County, where deputies responded earlier to reports of chest deep water in some spots. And in fact, right now, you may be able to make out those mailboxes back there to give you a sense of just how high the water is. Despite the fact that deputies came out here before the sun was up and tried to rescue people, they said the residents of this area did not want to leave their homes. And in fact, this morning, once the sun came up, we saw people actually walk all the way through it to a home back there, unsure if it's their home or if they were just going to check on a relative. So that's the ongoing flooding situation in this one particular pocket of Orange County. In downtown Orlando overnight, hazards were created like fallen trees, fallen power lines, of course, power outages and traffic lights that came down as well. The rain continues to fall here in Orlando. So at this point, there's no telling when this water may start to recede. All right, let's take a quick look at the story of the storm. It's been impressive for a lot of reasons for the meteorologists that have been forecasting it. It went from a category one to a category five within just 18 hours. And by the time it made landfall into the overnight hours last night, it was at a category three status as it swept throughout the state of Florida, causing so much devastation. Tornado outbreaks well ahead of that storm as it swept throughout those communities. And now it's at a category one status well offshore of Florida. And here's where it's at right now. Taking a look behind me, Hurricane Milton, still at 80 miles per hour in the center, allowing for it to stay at hurricane status at a category one for the time being. It's moving to the northeast just around 20 miles per hour as it starts to break apart and decay back into the Atlantic. But still, those showers are impacting communities anywhere from Daytona Beach all the way up along Georgia and the Carolinas, too. It's at a category one status. There's hurricane warnings still in effect just offshore of Daytona Beach and Jacksonville. There's tropical storm warnings still in effect right now in those inland areas as they're dealing with some breezy conditions as it continues to track off into the east. Here's where it's at as we head into the overnight hours tonight, continuing that cyclone for just or cyclone formation for just a little bit longer, but it starts to decay as it continues to head directly in that east direction. Now, here's future cast showing just light showers along that coastline from Georgia down into the and down into the all the portions, excuse me, throughout Flagler County up into Duval County. Storm totals anywhere up to around 18 inches happened just into St. Petersburg. Zephyr Hills got up to around 14 inches of rain throughout an 18 hour period. As this continues to track offshore, we'll see those lingering showers, winds moving in from the north anywhere up to around 18 to 25 miles per hour along that shoreline. But read, it has been a devastating storm and a strong storm at that into those overnight hours as many people are still without power right now. That's why planning and response are so important and we're seeing that so much of that. Jess, thank you so mm -hmm. much.